I'm Gail Solberg, and I'm interested in speaking with you about an important exhibit now in course at the Galleria Nazionale dell'Umbria in Perugia. The protagonist is Tadeo di Bartolo, the premier painter of Siena in the crucial years around 1400. The initiative was the idea of Marco Pierini, director of the Galleria Nazionale, and the right-hand person in getting the show organized and up and running is Verusca Picciarelli, Storica dell'Arte at the Galleria. Tadeo di Bartolo was born probably in 1362, and he lived until 1342. An apprentice, we think, beginning around 1375, in the 1390s, he traveled constantly outside of Siena before returning there to settle late in 1399. Quickly, he was known as painter for the commune, and that was thanks to a majestic series of frescoes in the key places, the cathedral and the town hall. I'd like to point out that Tadeo was equally renowned as a fresco painter as for panel paintings, which are the focus of, focus of our exhibit simply because they're the mobile works. He traveled uh, not only through the 90s, but until the end of his life. And when he came to Perugia, as he must have done several times in the years right around 1400, it was to deliver what was the most important polyptic altarpiece of the time to the Franciscans. The painting was double-sided, which made it remarkable. It was wide, seven compartments that reached about four and a half meters, and it was tiered with narrative paintings below the main register of standing saints and gable paintings above. Perugia is the venue for the exhibit because the Galleria retains all the main parts of the side with St. Francis, three saints out to either side of him, and at the front of this remarkable painting instead was the Madonna. In Perugia now, there are only four of the originally six flanking saints from the main tier, but the others have been discovered recently. The goal of the exhibit was to bring them back, but also other components that are known for this altarpiece. We are lucky to have on loan all but one of the known parts, and that's because the final piece was too fragile to travel. The Madonna looks down the nave of the church. This is where Tadeo signed the painting, whereas Francis and his cohort of saints looks to the back, to the choir for the friars in the church of San Francesco al Prato. In 1400, this church didn't look in the interior as it does today. That was due to structural change over time. <clears throat> the church, nevertheless, gave us the idea, which was the genial notion of the architect of the gallery, Maria Elena Lascaro, to recreate the environment of a Franciscan church. You see that she constructed chapels on one side and niches on the other as you move down a nave toward a backboard where we were able to install the paintings of the Franciscan altarpiece front to back. They had been split side but from side, and also front from back. Installing them was no small feat. The color of the walls in the exhibition derives from one of Tadeo's preferred pigments, this wonderful, warm, rosy tonality, perhaps reminiscent of the building stone of Assisi and other parts of Umbria. Here you see the nave of the church as we move past the chapels on the right and the niches on the left. The altarpiece originally stood free in space before the friar's choir, and so we have installed it. Here we're circulating around from the Madonna or nave side. An apse opens. There are transept chapels to either side of the apse. And then into view comes the rear of the altarpiece with the image of St. Francis. Here you see the painting in the tiered reconstruction with narratives down below and the single gable painting that we have on loan uh, from the top. Two of the paintings that were lacking from the main tier of the Madonna side were recognized in recent years and have been brought to Perugia to complete the 
simulation of the of the altarpiece at its front. Saint Clair came from Gubbio, and Saint Elizabeth of Hungary from Assisi, so they hadn't strayed too far. This is the phase of disinstalling the painting in its gallery setting by the transport company of art handlers Butterfly. Here, the panel of St. Clair is being reinstalled. These paintings instead came from much farther away. There are seven uh, known elements of the cycle of paintings of St. Francis's life. It must have been in a larger group originally. Six of them are housed in Hanover and the last uh, known element instead in the Netherlands. We're very fortunate to have them all. In these paintings of uh, landscapes and interiors of humans in interaction, gesticulating, uh, their faces emotive, uh, these are the kinds of subjects that I think really triggered Tadeo's imagination, and they are in themselves uh, a really compelling reason to, to study this painter, of course, painted in the brilliant colors, which are the hallmark of the Sienese school. It would be difficult to underestimate the scientific contribution that the exhibit has made. This is thanks in large part to a full series of x-rays and reflectographs of all the panels of the Perugia altarpiece. Here you see revealed the underdrawing for the figure of St. John the Evangelist with a careful delineation of the folds for his mantle. And then I draw your attention to this wonderfully articulated hand pinching the quill and to the fanned pages of his book. Study of the pigment by the restorers in the gallery, Maria Cristina Tomasetti and Daniele Costantini has done much to advance our knowledge about what gave Tadeo's pigments, the, this luminosity and the, his glazes to articulate and define surface effects. Well, let's return to the entrance to the exhibit where the visitor comes first into a narthex-like space where Tadeo is uh, introduced as much as one can. We don't know very much about his emergence. The notion that the exhibit is dedicated to his panel paintings is made clear here at the beginning with parts of two altarpieces. The large panel of the Madonna was the center of a triptych, now missing the lateral saints, but wonderful nonetheless, and a clear indication that Tadeo is uh, very much tied to the style of Simone Martini. The smaller panels of the Annunciation are extremely important works. They were the gables of his first signed and dated polyptych, and that came from the year 1389. Other paintings in this particular area of the exhibit only give a notion of Tadeo's ambient. We have an illumination of the crucifixion. He's known to have painted one, though not necessarily this. We have two book covers from the Sienese record office of the Gabella, and here I might make the claim as, for Tadeo as painter of the one on the left. The second exhibit uh, section of the exhibit is dedicated to Tadeo's travels. The 90s were spent outside of Siena, primarily in Pisa and in Genoa. These were very different experiences for him, or at least they are for us. In Pisa, he left a tremendous number of works. So it's extraordinarily rich, our section of the exhibit on his contribution at Pisa. We have three gable paintings from one of the most important altarpieces he left there of 1395, and then from two later paintings, which were multi-part but divided, as most polyptics of the period were, disassembled with their parts alienated, we have the Madonna from Nancy to be reaccompanied after very much time by two sets of saints that remained in Pisa. I want to make a point about restoration. The exhibit was the, the occasion for much restoration, and those two panels that you just saw from Pisa were in fact restored, as were the gable paintings from Bergen. When we move to Genoa, Tadeo is not, not very well represented because in Genoa, there are not many paintings left from his hand. 
The two, uh, the extremities of this composition are certainly from Genoese churches, and the one on the left is certainly by Taddeo. The one on the right I'd like to see added to his corpus, at least in part. It may be a collaboration with the local painter Niccolo da Voltri. The third painting here is not necessarily from Genoa. That's a, an hypothesis. It is, however, one of the most enchanting babes that Tadeo painted. This panel came to us from Budapest. The next chapel that opens is focused on Tadeo's return to Siena, right around 1400. And here we have the first of the intact polyptics in the exhibit. Having noted that ordinarily a polyptic was disassembled, it's rare to find one that's complete. This wonderful example comes from Santa Caterina della Notte in Siena. Together with it hang three gable paintings from the mammoth altarpiece that Taddeo made for Montepulciano, then the Collegiata. This was a competitor to the painting for the Franciscans in dimensions. It was of different type in three principal parts, but soared as tall. It's now in the course of restoration, and for that reason, the gable paintings, which had been removed to the laboratory for work, were able to come to us. In fact, their restoration is not yet complete. In the same space hang two Madonna paintings, which speak to us about Tadeo's modes of uh, production. He used templates, he used models, reapplying them never exactly the same as these two Madonnas show. At this point, we're moving down the nave of our simulated church, and before we reach the section of triumph dedicated to the Franciscan altarpiece, another section of the exhibit opens, and it shows contemporary paintings that are of narrative subject. Having said that the Francis paintings ignited Tadeo's imagination on a small scale. Here we see how when a large frame was dedicated to a narrative theme, in this case, the adoration of the shepherds and the nativity, the possibility for landscape details, for again, human interaction, marvel, uh, surprise, um, is something that's really quite engaging to see. The main panel is in Siena, and the predella from underneath came from uh, Germany. This is a really large painting, but no, not as large as another of the narrative panels, which is, for me, a really fascinating work. We've hung it to face the Franciscan altarpiece because it was made for the same city, Perugia, in the very same year, 1403, and it could hardly be more different. Here, the notion of surprise, reaction, gesture is really at full throttle. The size of this painting is in itself remarkable. It's not really a polyptic because so far as we know, there were no added panels. This rich environment of the exhibit not only confronts the two paintings of 1403 for Perugia, but it also opens with the second of the fully intact polyptics that we have on loan. The section of the exhibition that is dedicated to the notion of innovation. It starts with what I might call a lesson in the taxonomy of the altarpiece a language that we use to describe the parts is not necessarily uh, open to all. The Volterra altarpiece is a real coup on loan because our request for its loan was met with a seriousness which was an evaluation of the actual state of the painting. That led to investigation about the viability of its travel and the decision that a close study of how it coheres was in order. And with that, the dismantling and arrival in Perugia was undertaken with the utmost care by the company Butterfly and the restorers. And it was actually a laboratory in the Galleria space as this painting was unpacked and then remounted. 
the base was fit with the panels of saints and then hoisted into position and finally checked, of course, for its stability. This painting will no doubt return home in better condition for the examination and analysis that it underwent uh, as a result of the exhibit. Now we're moving into a transept of the exhibition space where more paintings from Volterra together with a one of uh, Tadeo's works, the last of the intact polyptics we have, is on view. Volterra and San Gimignano were important places of his activity later in his career. And with the painting from San Gimignano, I think the notion of innovation uh, comes to the fore. It's not in the shape of an altarpiece or even in its subject that it, the innovation is important, but rather in style. Compared to that Simone Martini-like Madonna from the early altarpiece, here Tadeo is choosing a different physical type. He's interested in monumentality, in a weight, uh, in ponderousness. And that is the leitmotif of his later style. When we move past the apse to come to the other transept, we have parts of Tadeo's uh, next largest uh, altarpiece after the Perugia and the Montepulciano polyptics, and that is a painting of 1418, disassembled it too, and present for us in the peripheral parts from the gables and the piers. The notion here of that monumentality of style in this painting, which was for the Dominicans in Gubbio of 1418, uh, is perhaps even better illustrated in the two Madonnas that accompany it to either side. The one on the right is Tadeo's last signed and dated Madonna, not from an altarpiece, but you see here in her directness, her frankness, again, her ponderousness, uh, that new style that I think looks toward a Renaissance mode. The, that Madonna from Orte belongs to the section uh, entitled Variety, in which we show the other sorts of paintings for which Tadeo was responsible, the works that certainly kept his bottega of interest to citizens from all social uh, ranks. There are paintings here of um, the Madonna for personal devotion. There's a drawing from the cover of a Sienese state record book. There is a wonderful painted Madonna in three dimensions, a sculpture. And it was made together with Tadeo's adopted son and uh, partner, the man to whom he left his enterprise. It's of interest particularly because we believe it came from the center of a polyptych, no other part of which survives. Here you see that painted Madonna, the Madonna del Magnificat, together with the Madonna from the altarpiece, which uh, is at the heart of our show, the heptoptych for the Franciscans. To remind the visitor that Tadeo was a fresco painter as much as a panel painter, we have at the end of the itinerary a simulation, a virtual recreation of the frescoes that were contemporary with the Perugia altarpiece. The exhibit is accompanied by a richly illustrated catalog with contributions from a team of national and international scholars and with texts also in English. The city of Perugia has turned out to welcome Tadeo di Bartolo with the banners uh, about the exhibit in the Galleria Nazionale at the Mini Metro, on the Scala Mobile, and in the piazzas. Uh, so let me make a very warm invitation that you come and learn about him. Uh, he certainly merits your attention for the visual delights and for his place as a protagonist of Italian painting around 1400. Thank you.